Okay, so whoops. Let's change to black. Okay, so this is be part three, guys. The powerful topic is lighting window. Window size value. Uh, windowing. Basically I can say basically these three are the same thing like depends of the book you're reading depends of the source you having sliding window window wing is basically the same process even some books um, pointing as a window size but in fact window size is the value itself to understand the process the sliding windows is the process and window wing is the process window size is not like a process like a value so we will learn later I'm just gonna put it like reference window size will be a two byte value okay but yeah it's everything related with the window and a sliding window then we will check the sequence numbers what is the sequence number and how it works and then sequence number and then the acknowledge right There is, uh, yeah. For this topic, there is another extra topic. We are not, we are not gonna cover it in this video. It's uh, uh, window scaling. The window scaling. You wanna check it out more into details as soon as you understand the window wing, sliding window. This will be a piece of cake for you. So basically, sliding uh, window scaling takes this value, which this is an old value. This is not a scalable for new infrastructure or fast networks. So it literally scales up to like four, like doubles. Okay, doubles the value, basically, right? Without like details. So yeah, we're gonna check this, and then we're gonna check also like some extra topic here well it's not extra it's something related with this it's the maximum segment size right also maximum se segment size we're not, we're not gonna check it out here in too deep details you can check it out in, in my maximum segment size in a, uh, fundamentals uh, but yeah we're gonna do some refresh here in this video so let's move to the topic Okay, so f to understanding the window wing, we're gonna use some everyday example human communication. Imagine this is Bob, and Bob is a host of a great party for a great pool party. So Bob want to invite like everyone, you know, it's a huge party because some rich one he's doing a crazy party outside the city. So he want to invite first to the closer buddies. One of them is George. Right, so George is one of the closer buddies. So he want to explain everything about the pool party. So it, that means take too much explanation, means too much time and too much words to talk. Right? So Bob making a phone call to George, hey bro, I, I heard you, you're in Amsterdam, but I want to give you some details about a party, you need to come over, because like, this party is amazing, blah, 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 so Bob started talking. So Bob, imagine Bob sending like 100 words, okay, explaining. Bob, in some point, he will do some pause. To wait some answer from George so in this case we call it the acknowledge right we're gonna wait the acknowledge from George back to Bob because Bob need to be sure like 
George got these hundred words. So George said like, oh yeah, yeah, bro, that sounds awesome, yeah, I'm in Amsterdam, but I will be back soon, so yeah, keep talking, keep telling me. So he, you know, is willing to send another hundred words, because he's explaining, and he will do some pause. So he do some pause, he send the words, and George will got these words and say like, oh, that sounds great, keep telling me more. So George sending an acknowledge to Bob, right? So that's basically the window size, or the sliding window, that's the wind sliding window process, the windowing. The process or sending data, waiting for the other endpoint to send an acknowledge. There is some extra information, like imagine like Bob at this point, he noticed like George, he's like paying attention, like he's fully concentrated on the pool party, even though he's in Amsterdam partying, he like super ultra like, yeah tell me more, 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 so he's super, like Bob saw like George is super concentrated, so he decided to increase the number of words to 500, right? 500 words. Okay. So he's doing some pause as the process is like normal. He sent the message and you're saying like wow that sounds fantastic. I wanna go to I wanna be there now, you know. Tell me more. So, Bob is so excited, so he increased the number to 1000. So he was so excited, and in these 1000 uh, words explaining, he was explaining which girls within this message. He was explaining which girls going to the party. So he's doing some pause. And George is not answering, he's not sending the acknowledge. He's like, what happened? Connection lost. George didn't hear what, what happened, no acknowledge. So in some point say like, oh bro, sorry, sorry, I just was checking my email, my work email, or my Facebook notification, whatever, and I was not paying attention. I didn't I, I didn't got everything. I just got twenty percent. I just got that my ex-girlfriend going. Can you send me the other 80% please? So Bob decided to say okay I'm gonna send you the 80% you didn't got. Back to you. And George will say, oh, dude, that's great, uh, many girls, keep telling me more. So at this point, Bob decided to decrease the amount of words, because he saw, like, George is not, like, paying attention as much as the beginning. So he will decrease it back to the original value. George, are you paying attention? Yes. Keep telling me. So this cycle gonna go till Bob finish explaining about the pool party, meaning sending the whole thing. In computing can be like a PNG file, like a, yeah. JPG file, like a lot of files, right? Great, so that's basically the windowing. The window size, or the window win or the sliding window is the same thing, the same process. Window size, what is a window size? It's a value measured in bytes, defining the amount of bytes or the data that uh, the source 
will send to the destination before getting an acknowledge. Then we said that maximum segment size is important. Why is it important? Because even though like we agree that the maximum segment size will be 100 words, let's take some real example, real value. So imagine like, oops, imagine that we use the window size like 6,000 bytes. We're not going to send 6,000 bytes. Remember, there is some value called MTU. We can use. We, we cannot send more than 1,500 bytes. We can send more, but we'll be fragmented. So we cannot send this Windows like the. We cannot send the whole window size value. We can split the window size value. So we're going to split the window size value. This is the window size. And we're going to split it in the maximum segment size. So, for instance, if my maximum segment size is a thousand bytes, we're gonna send six packets with a thousand bytes each before waiting for the acknowledge of George. That's the maximum segment size. By default, the maximum segment size by default is the MTU minus the layer 3 header minus the layer 4 header. So actually, like I click in the document below, sorry, behind this board, there is some documents. Uh, they call the RFCs. I based a lot of of my networking knowledge on the RFCs because that's the real truth of the truth. So this RFC 80879 which I was reading basically explained this. So I already have in the background so if I'm going to the beginning let me put it like here so RFC 879 is speaking about the maximum segment size and related topics. If you go to the page uh, 4, uh, you will see that the maximum segment size, whoops, it's not this, it's this. The maximum segment size is the MTU minus 20 minus 20. Means the first 20 is the IP header or layer 3 header, and the other one is the layer 4 header. So, for instance, if your MTU is 576 minus 40, your maximum segment size is 536. So, you're going to split your window size divided to 536 in this example, just in this example, not every time, just in this example. Remember this value is variable, always. Sorry, the window size is variable, always. The maximum segment size will be fixed in the three-way handshake. Okay, so that's basically the rule, so that's basically the concepts. And I want to use red now, like this. So we check maximum segment size, window size, process, sliding windows, window wing. But what about sequence number and acknowledge number? We didn't talk about this. We saw it in the example, but we didn't relate with the real truth of the concept. Remember, Bob was explaining within a thousand words about the whole girls and George said like oh dude I'm sorry I was busy I just heard my ex-girlfriend going can you repeat the other 80% okay so how Bob 
identify this 20% and how he's identifying the other 80%? Well, they will identify it with a number identifier. Yeah, literally with an identifier with with this number identifies the sequence number and the acknowledged number. They use it for identify the the data that has to be retransmitted, basically. So you you have some order in the TCP, as you notice. So let's check it out with the Wireshark. So let's check with the three-way handshake example. I want to check. Um, We're gonna check the window size first. So, source is the private IP. In this case, is Bob. Destination is your George, the uh, web server. So Bob saying, "Dude, we're in my layer four header. My window size is 81.92. That means that I can just handle 81." 92 bytes before you were going to send me an acknowledge in other words is Bob is saying that I'm just gonna handle 8192 bytes in my buffer for this particular connection because this is the amount of bytes I can handle for my window size so in the other side, George replying to Bob saying, "Okay, dude, that's fine, but my Windows size value is lower. Is five seven nine two. And then Bob answering, "Okay, dude. So if you're telling me this, so let's fix it to forty two eighty four. So remember, guys, this is a three-way handshake connection, right?" So a three-way handshake, as you already know, is to start the communication before sending data, right? So within the three-way handshake, we agree with the window size, and we also agree with some other value. We, what other value? We go into options. Let's go to the first packet. Let's go to options. We also agree the maximum segment size because Bob is saying, besides my window size, Bob is saying my maximum segment size is 1460. And Jorge is saying, okay, dude, also, my, I heard your maximum segment size is 1460, but mine is 1440. So we're gonna agree, as you notice when we finish the true way handshake we don't even see the maximum segment size because we already agree with uh, with the receiver right because in this case George is the receiver so George is talking to Bob saying okay dude even though you're telling me like your maximum segment size is 1460 we're gonna use mine which is 1440 so what they already arranged within the true way handshake will be always static means in the whole connection in this TCP connection they will use 1440 for the maximum segment size and then as you can notice the maximum segment size is lower than the MTU and as you notice by default Bob was using 1460 because the 1460 is the maximum segment size by default because it's 500 MTU minus 20 bytes for the layer 3 header minus 20 bytes for the layer 4 header so that's basically the windows window size the window in and the maximum segment size okay guys so I did some uh, pause on the video, I wanted to take some lunch, so now it's time to keep with the sequence number and the acknowledge number, okay? So let's open a new window, a uh, new board. So far so good, right? So about TCP, we already covered three-way handshake, okay? 
uh, we all know what is true to a handshake at this point. We, al we already know what is maximum segment size at this point. We already know what is um, sequence number, like we speak about sequence number and acknowledge number. We said that these numbers help us to track the missing data to resend it to the other destin to the destination, right? Because in case they're requesting some data was lost, we're gonna track through the sequence number and the acknowledge number and we're gonna send it. But we haven't seen like details about it, right? So then we're gonna check it in, in in detail with Wireshark right now. Okay, so let's take this example and then we're gonna recreate the example with the Bob and George. So in this case what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna type the IP address 182.168.12 and 174 143 to 13 184. So you will see what I want to do. So I'm going to take like 18 and then like a bigger. Oh man, what I'm doing? Yeah. Like kind of like this, right? So then we're going to type here like Bob and George right Bob and George right so yeah basically this so we have a Bob in this way and then we have a George in this other way and we said like George it's uh, the web server right so whoops so George will be the web server and Bob will be computer okay so this will be like this and this will be like this basically right so we wanna have like this and then we're gonna like split this for the sake of not getting confused so this is Bob and George remember guys that like um, Bob is just a client and this is the server web server we're going to use uh, TCP 80, right? Port 80, right? Okay, for the sake of this example, so let's move with the acknowledge and sequence number. I think you will love this uh, part. Okay, so. As you can see, Bob is here, it's a source, and uh, George is the destination, it's a web server, a public IP. So start the three way handshake. So within the three way handshake, as you see, the CNC NAC and the ACK, like in the first value, you will see how they are sending an acknowledged number of zero and a sequence number of zero, right? Seems to be zero, but there are not like to be honest, that's not zero. That, as you see, selected F six one C six C V E, right? So if you're reading a book or you're reading some uh, TCP source, uh, the sequence number it's a random number. That's how they describe it. Like it's a random number, so it's not zero. So even though, like for the sake of a well uh, explanation, like Wireshark trying to put it easier for us is not zero like the very beginning of the three-way handshake is not zero it's some random value so we can uncheck the relative sequence number in in, in, in preference you go to did preference in preference you go to protocols in protocols you go to TCP and then in TCP you will uncheck the relative sequence number and then you will see the truth of the truth right you will see that the sequence number is that so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just retype quick just to show you. 41290579982. So that's the real sequence number, right? Sequence number is that, right? And uh, in, in hexadecimal, 
will be uh, let me see maybe I can copy the string in hexadecimal yeah I think it's yeah extreme right so that's that's basically that one right okay so that's not zero just to be clear okay I'm gonna put it back and then we're gonna re uh, rechange it just for, for the sake of the understanding so TCP right whoops so TCP and then you check again and then you will see zero so basically when you start it through a handshake the client will send a random sequence number decimal random sequence number and the acknowledge number you, you see zero because he haven't got like any acknowledge number at all right so George in this case so George is sending let me put this uh, that will be cool like that let me put this here because that will be like clear right so it's this which is the same as this so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna <laughs> what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this it's above is basically let's use red in this part above in the scene whoops so above first in the scene flat is sending this as a sequence number okay and the acknowledge is zero and the act is zero so what is the next guys we all know that is CNAC okay for Wireshark this means zero right all this means zero okay so what is the CNAC the CNAC will be now the sequence no sorry for the CNAC which uh, that George will send to Bob the sequence number well I will put it in black the sequence number will be another random number for the Wireshark you're gonna see zero but we're gonna see different than this one because it's the sequence number from George and the acknowledge now will go to one will increase to one so let's check this so then in this one the sequence is zero but it's, as you notice it's completely different next to decimal value and the acknowledge number is also relative act number means like it's relative like seems to be just one but it's not one it's like a random number right but it's it's now one it's increasing one right because George is sending to Bob one acknowledge the first acknowledge is one so now it's zero one so let's use the same colors so the first one was the first one was zero zero and then the second one is zero one right and then the third one where Bob it's requ like replying the ACK will be one one means like one for the sequence number and one for the acknowledge number because he already got an, an acknowledge and then you adding one more for the acknowledge for, sorry for the sequence okay so this is basic thing like we all already know before this information that will be more interesting later on when we going down let me put this more down this uh, will be kind of tricky and crazy okay so they finished the true way handshake and then we will see the third packet so in the second one is zero one and then in the third it increasing one to one okay so it's true handshake since in ac ac is zero 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 one and one one right so what happens after the true handshake is accomplished so after the true handshake is accomplished like we all know like between devices they can start uh, sending like trans uh, sending yeah transmitting data basically they can send data right so in this case Bob is requesting to George sorry this is the true handshake this is the fourth fourth uh, frame Bob is sending to George through a get with 
HTTP protocol he's requesting with some get an image logo.png image he's requesting this because the true way handshake is already accomplished and so now they can transfer data so he's requesting this data he's requesting an image to request this image to Bob cost 791 bytes just for the request just to say dude I need this image all this message it will be 791 bytes okay just the layer 4 segment length as you can see here or in other words the layer 4 um, header will be 70, uh, 725 bytes so why not, why putting this uh, here in, in, in this perspective because that will be important and that will be important value to increasing the numbers so in this request the sequence number is still one and the acknowledged number is still one right but Bob already know that the next sequence number will be one plus the segment length if we move into the number f uh, to the frame number fifth number five sorry we see that the sequence number is one but now the acknowledged number is 725 plus one uh, I want to show you now the same value I mean I'm gonna do the calculation without the relative sequence number okay so we're saying that the sequence number one in the Wireshark language in real language is that value so I'm gonna copy in hexadecimal, right? Right. So I want to put it in a notepad. As you can notice here, this is the truth, right? As you can notice how it's selected FC, 1C, 6C, VF, right? So it's here. So let's translate this into decimal, right? So let's put this and let's put this and then I'm going to put like hexadecimal, that's this, right? this translated into decimal is this so I'm gonna copy this so it's basically that is that okay then I will add 7025 because it's the a layer 4 header from the requester which is Bob right so Bob is requesting this so they have 725 so then will be for Wireshark language 226 that's Wireshark language mean relative act number language but the truth is like is F6 1C 6F 94 okay so let's copy this so that's saying like equals this one so if we translate this to hexadecimal is the same as this plus you see this plus the plus 725 we're gonna copy this should be this is the same as this right if we translate this into hexadecimal voila this and this is pretty much the same thing you see it's very the Wireshark language because it's the same thing you you are in one means one this is one for Wireshark right so plus the layer for header this is the total right as you notice 726 acknowledge this is the acknowledge for George which is the server okay the acknowledge and then Bob use the same value as sequence number right this sequence number that's the sequence number as you notice Bob will have the same sequence number after this point you say Jorge how you know this you will check it out you see connection Bob to Jorge just acknowledge sequence number the same 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 George 
why the sequence number I mean why the sequence number it's always the same for Bob why for Bob so the answer is because Bob is not sending anything in this equation right whoa so let me put it in green Bob is not sending anything Bob is requesting the picture who is sending the picture George is sending the picture right so George is sending the data means George is sending some parts with the maximum segment size as we you remember you sending the whole image as we said we send the logo dot PNG seg is segment uh, it's sending to pieces we'll chunk this we chunk all of this in some parts this is not sending anything Bob is just receiving that's the reason okay so if you notice we were in the frame number five sequence one seven two one six one seven two one six so he already knows I mean Wireshark already knows that the next sequence number will be the sequence number plus the packet length I mean the, the layer 4 header which is the TCP segment length is the same thing this plus this then Bob still same sequence number but now the acknowledged number was um, the length plus one now you can see it here then acknowledge number the same in the next one will be 2298 why 2298 because before it was 40, 1449 so let's make some calculation so 14 49 plus 1448 the same value you, you see and then it's increasing one one you see it's increasing the acknowledged number for George is the same for Bob is the same the acknowledge will change because it's increasing the TCP segment length till the logo PAG is changing that simple so for instance if we lost this amount of bytes like if we lost the bytes this payload if we lost this 1448 bytes we're gonna track based on the acknowledge number and the sequence number and then we're gonna resend it that simple so if you're going back and forth it's the same 72, 726 for above and it's increasing the payload or the layer 4 header is in this case is the same value right so increasing you see increasing 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 till packet number 36 they will finish how we know it because they reassemble everything they reassemble the whole frames they put it back together that's what TCP does they took the whole packets they reassemble like literally saying here I'm reassembling 16 packets and then I create a PNG file they literally explain what is PNG portable network graphics PNG logo file right so it's kind of like the hash of this uh, file you see you can see even the information of uh, uh, some information let me see where you can see even the name background color that's so cool right I give you like details about the image whatever so what I wanted to show you is the name, but uh, I don't see they didn't show the name. Anyways, that's not uh, important now. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's here somewhere. Image PNG. 
I'm sorry guys like it's not here but uh well as you can see like they reassemble everything right so that's basically how the second number and the knowledge number is the true way handshake works and basically that's uh, everything like in this topic like we already cover like many stuff in the TCP fundamentals like we co we covered a lot of things we covered three way handshake we covered maximum segment size sequence number acknowledge number where is TCP how it works uh, many things like uh, a lot of things like that's it like uh, if you watch the whole three parts of the video like you will have like a better understanding like feel free to ask me whatever you need uh, there is uh, some concepts that you uh, you notice in the whole videos that you can get the strong and solid uh, fun foundations based on other videos that I, I also gonna post but uh, feel free to ask whatever you have regard with this video I will post the Wireshark file in h5p.com where I posting basically the whole videos I will post everything, all, all this image, like everything I post there. And um, yeah, I think that's it. And um, that's it so far for TCP. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope this will be very helpful for you. And uh, let's move on with the more interesting topics. Bye bye.